Hey there, how's it going? Cat up here. There's one tool that I've been using for a couple of years now that I've found hugely useful no matter what system of role-playing game I use. The best part is, all you really need is a single six-sided die and maybe some free graphics, which I'll supply to you. But you can even draw them yourself if you have a crayon. When attempting to determine a random sequence of events, most often in RPGs, you'll see lists. Maybe percentile lists, maybe lists using other dice, but with nested sublists. Either way, these lists have two complications. Firstly, the DM has to take time to painstakingly balance the lists. Maybe it's a random combat encounter, but you think the dragon only deserves a 1% chance, but maybe the human thugs deserve a 7% chance, but they have a 13% chance over, and if this is, is that what you should give the orcs? Secondly, if you try to reuse the same lists, players will often begin to figure out what roles give the results they want, which takes some of the mystery out of it. And making those lists as I just mentioned, not always fun, not always great. This is where the hex map comes in. This is an example of a normal size map that I use for a hex map. Although sometimes I use larger versions as well. I use this for two main things. Random lists like encounters, weather, etc and as a tool to represent exploration. Let me walk you through some of the basics of how it works and some quick examples. However, before we continue, please hit that subscribe button and the little alert bell so you can be notified of new videos as they come out. I'm in the middle of reworking all my old videos from my old channel as well as some new ones and continuing the Eberron series plus all the random gaming videos I have. All right, let's continue. Firstly, let's start with the basics. We'll start with the normal size grid for now. One of the things I like about this grid is that no matter where you start, you can theoretically end on almost any hex with few exceptions. Customization of the grid could include numbering them for specific results, like this. In this case, I'm going to set up the grid to have certain types of results based on which hex they land on. I've only used four icons for this example to represent combat, traps, social encounters, or treasures found. I'm then going to take some sort of marker, in this case I've already created a handy primary token with numbers on it to help me with the next step. You can also set the marker anywhere on the hex map. It doesn't matter on a grid this size, although on larger grids you could place it a little more strategically. I'm going to place mine in the center of the grid. The next step is easy. I roll a six-sided die twice and record the results separately. Depending on the number I roll, it determines the direction the marker moves. In this case, I rolled a 2 and a 6. So I move a single hex in the direction of the 2, and then another single hex in the direction of the 6. This ends up being a social encounter, only one hex away from the original point. Leave the marker where it is. Now, next time you use the chart, you can just roll again from the point that you're currently at. This way, even if we roll a 2 and a 6 again, the result will be completely different. Since players don't know what the hex map looks like, or where you started on the hex map, it's unlikely they're ever going to figure out what any given roll is going to give them. One extra rule should be noted. If you reach the edge of the hex map, but roll to go past it, that's easy. Just wrap around to the opposing side of the hex map. Since it's a hex grid, there will always be a matching side to wrap around to. Using the hex map this way for random tables is great, but I also have one other use that's great for limited exploration. I find that meticulous mapping out of dungeons, large buildings, etc. can look neat, but sometimes be a little tedious with time, and can also take a lot of extra graphic knowledge on your part, or, or well, tedious amount of work on your part to set up. After the sixth or seventh room of exploration, the players might just want to get to a point of interest. Let's think about the heroes from The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings, exploring the mines of Moria. The movie and the book do pretty much the same thing here. Despite being in the mines for an extended period of time, we seem to skip most of the boring bits. We see the parts that are important, like the fork in the road or the action sequences. Other than that, any time spent traveling is quickly presented, but not in quite as much detail, just sort of glossed over to give you flavor. I use the hex maps for a similar narrative approach to exploration in limited environments. I can do this by using completion mode. 
let me show you what I mean. Here is a large grid with numbers on it to show you the points of interest I've written out for a dungeon. Some of them are combat encounters with their own battle maps, some of them are puzzles, etc. I've also included a couple of tokens to represent completely random encounters of some things to just spice it up. The blank areas are just time spent delving into the dungeon to help me keep track of the passage of time. Maybe each time we use the hex map, one hour of time passes. That's like a day and a half of exploration if they hit every point of the map. Of course, they could always determine that they just finished what they came for and just stop exploring at any time, assuming they aren't trapped. <laughs> <clears throat> but if I use this in completion mode, then every time they explore a hex, we add a completion marker on top of it. In the future, if we roll to land on that hex, we instead travel to the next available hex in the same direction. You can continue this way, or once you reach three or less hexes, then you can even just start rolling a D6s as a D3 or a D2, or even just choose that they're done or that they reach a certain point. So let's show an example of rolling on a partially completed map. Here we have a dungeon. Many of the hexes are completed and have been crossed out. Let's roll to move. Our results are one and three. The one brings us to a clear hex. But then we move to the three, and it's already completed. In fact, most of the line is completed. The two rules then affect us. If a hex is completed, keep moving in that direction until you find one that isn't. Also, if you reach the edge of the hex map, then wrap around until you reach the opposing side. I just continue this until I'm satisfied they completed everything they should for a fun experience, or until the players have decided they spent long enough in the map. This lets me focus on the narration of the interesting points without getting trapped into the specific maps or the tedium of it. It's a win-win for everybody. So there you have it. The hex map system that I've been using and modifying for years now. I thought it'd be kind of useful for everyone else to try it. If you also want to try this out and want some of the graphics that I used for it in this video, they'll be uploaded to the free stuff section of my Discord. The link to my Discord is down below. Feel free to stop on by and say hi. The community is growing extremely fast, but we welcome everyone we can. Alright, and as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good one, eh?